The short game is listener supported on Patreon. If you'd like to support the show and join us on our Discord, head to theshortgame.net or patreon.com slash the short game. Welcome back to The Short Game. This is a show about short video games, games that respect your time. I'm Regan Kelly, and I'm joined this week by two of my very cool co-hosts. Laura Nash. Nate Herninger. And this week, we are talking about a video game called The Magnificent Truffle Pigs. What a great name for a game. Definitely top tier name. Yeah, I think that's honestly what drew me into it. Like, mm-hmm. I, I saw this listed somewhere on, like, upcoming indie games of some some list or other or something. And that title, The Magnificent Truffle Pigs, uh, really drew me in. And then the the next thing that I learned about it uh, was that it is a narrative adventure game, a sort of first-person narrative adventure game in the vein of things like Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, which is uh, notable because this is a the first game from Thunked, uh, a new developer uh, headed by Andrew Crawshaw. Uh, who was the lead designer on the Chinese Rooms, Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. Uh, And these two games both have, uh, well, two major things in common. One is that they uh, are narrative games wherein you walk around uh, a sort of countryside, uh, picking up a story as you go. And the other is that they are English AF. (laughs) It is so British. There There were multiple times where the main character said something and i was like i don't even know what that means within context clues <laughs> she says something like he took me for a rumble oh yeah which i you could infer that sounds dirty but within the context of the story it was definitely not so i was like i don't know what that means but is i it also British? loved is it, it metal detectorings slang <laughs> we haven't gotten to that yet the other big conceit of this is but that geez, this Jaffa is Jaffa cakes and all <laughs> yeah the, the other yeah. conceit here is that this is a uh, a game about metal detectoring and also about conversation so like if you've played firewatch the easiest comparison here uh firewatch was a game about having a long conversation over the radio with your uh your you know radio friend uh, Delilah, and this is a conversation about exploring a English country farm and using a metal detector to dig up things that are just below the surface uh, while having a radio conversation with your very British friend uh, Beth is a name I think. Yep, right. Beth yes. and Adam. Yeah. Yes, and I associate extremely British metal detecting with the TV show <clears throat> The Detectorists, which is about <laughs> weirdos in a metal detecting group. So I was prepared for very strange, probably older men having odd adventures and talking about British history. This is not that game. This no, is not yet at another all. entry in let's play a narrative game that might actually be about mental illness or privilege or both. <laughs> Maybe both. Yeah, nepotism, the game. Um, yeah, um, I, I, I actually, we talked about at the end of the last episode, you know, we, we said we were doing this game and I kind of riffed on metal detecting just as a thing that people do. Because um, it's always that like, I get the the fun of finding things, but like, you know, you just see people all like, why are you doing that right here? But I will say, um, you know, this game has some some opportunities in it. But one thing that was surprising is I actually did enjoy the the metal detecting. I yeah. thought it was satisfying, like walking around, you know, your little beeps and your little shovel and everything like finding stuff. Uh, I I was surprised that I actually enjoyed this like physical element of the game. There are some things like the metal detectoring thing is, I think, the smartest thing about this game. And we're going to get into this is a game that is to say it's not without its problems is is really undercutting or underselling how how poorly considered or like poorly executed some portions of this game are. We tend to really stick to stuff that we really love. This was one that was like, this game is definitely in our wheelhouse. And frankly, it was a bit of a disappointment. And we're going to get to that in a minute. But sticking with. The real positives here, I I agree that I really, really liked the metal detecting. Um, and I think it's actually a really, really smart thing if you are building a game that is, you know, a conversation 
driven exploration game. You know, if you you know played Firewatch, like that game worked because the activity of hiking around that very nicely realized natural setting was really interesting. And the little yeah. things that you had to do there were really interesting. And uh, metal detecting is like a really great way to ruin a nice walk through the British countryside. <laughs> um, oh. But like it, it really, it really works here as a, as an activity to do as a part of a, a narrative uh, thing. You know, if, if you want to, if you want a game, that's like going to do a walk and talk, uh, there's a lot worse ways to walk and talk than, <laughs> But in to, this game, you walk <laughs> and then you stop. Yeah, and then we're going to get to that. Like when I when I looked yeah. at this, I thought, "Wow, what a great idea for a combo!" Even that, they've managed to find some ways to like kind of make that not work as well as you might think. But like as yeah. an idea, it's a very good one, and some parts of the execution are very good. And yeah. I do inherently love looking at well-designed or interesting objects and and staring at them in a game. So if you get to observe an object and talk about it, I think that's a very fun mechanic and I'm usually down. So in metal detecting, even if it's something you know, like a screw, picking it up, taking a picture of it, looking at it from different angles, and then hearing a joke about it, almost always, Mm -hmm. even if it's just a kind of a bummer object, I enjoy always having that little... Yeah. joke about it yeah for the same reason it was interesting to take random crap out of the drawers in uh, uh gone home mm-hmm. it's still interesting here to dig up like 40 random ass pieces of metal out of the ground turn them over in your hand and look at you know all the sides of a nicely done little 3d realistic model of some trash yeah. that you dug up it, it's interesting to do even if the specific items themselves you know m- most of them are not particularly interesting in and of themselves there's something interesting about that activity of unearthing things and then examining them and i think it's a useful storytelling device like i, I think the the conceit of the game is is really smart you know the the sort of gameplay loop of this game is you have your metal detector and you're walking around in a very nicely designed field and you wait until it beeps and then you dig it up and you find something and then you send a picture of it to your partner. And then, you know, probably nine times out of 10, that item you find is going to spark some sort of memory, some sort of recall, some sort, something that makes the, that drives the conversation and moves the story forward. And it's pretty clever. Like I, I think, just on paper, that is a cool idea. And you find some interesting things, you find some weird things. Uh, but for the most part, it is mo- it's just like screws and, uh, you know, shelf pieces brackets of it's shelf and brackets, you know, and, and some of the, from the 70s. And- yeah. And, and th- so that's where like the execution is a little off and it's. I think really what we're getting at here that it doesn't work is the writing like this. This is a solid design, I think, for a game like this. And if this had had better writing, I think it would have been, you know, like Mm -hmm. mechanics. But yeah, it would have been. Well, yeah, there's some there's some (laughs) things that like some some subtle tweaks of the mechanics. Like I think that the main thing that I think, Nate, you're talking about is the fact that you can't continue to talk while you're metal detecting this is the this is actually i think the part that makes the game not as good for me because some of the writing i think is intentionally like dull it is it is supposed to be two people just chit-chatting you know that they are presented as old friends and these items sometimes spark like old memories and old things that are nice to listen to this game is fully voice acted but you cannot do anything else while this is talking i mean technically you can walk around but there's no reason to because your metal detector is on the ground and so you're gonna have to go back and pick it up anyway so all you end up doing is just sitting there like a third of the screen is a big walkie talkie so it's blocking half of what you're looking at anyway and the another quarter of the screen is like the speech bubbles basically because everything is written out as well. So you, all of the sort of fun tactile elements of this game of, of, of searching and and looking at the world, it just stops whenever they're talking. And because this is a narrative game that it's the whole game is them talking. So there's just so much time where you are just sitting there listening to inconsequential stuff. 
And I just like I, I think they did it because they don't want you to find an item while they're talking about another item. The items are pretty close together. You don't go more than like a minute between finding items. So I think they would have had to like really space things out a lot more to allow you to search while having the conversation. But they needed to come up with something to let me do with my hands while I'm just hearing these two people talk. Or, and I think this might be the point that you two are making, make the dialogue a hundred percent interesting, relevant, and and tight. Because mm-hmm. that was the problem. Like you can't have uh, like not tight language and nothing to do. You either need like not tight, just like talking radio, you know, like re- like listen to a podcast while walking around, sort of stuff, or it needs to be like. I don't want to do anything else because I just want to listen to these people talk, but they kind of don't do either. It yeah. suffered by comparison to you know, not only Firewatch, what we just played overboard because there are very few decisions to make. So <laughs> yeah. it's not just dialogue where you can't take physical actions. It's dialogue where you're not making dialogue choices either. So right. Right. it's not like an oxen free where you're wandering around, but you have a conversation and you are making legit choices that change the script. It's a very linear game. And I'm okay with a very linear game where the plot will happen, where the plot happens no matter what. But I do like a dialogue decision to keep me engaged because otherwise each time I pick up an object, I feel like I'm triggering a mini cutscene. So what I was going to say, it's a cutscene where what you're looking at is a walkie talkie and like whatever was in the background when you happen to be there. It's it's very dull. Also, they keep having lunch in their car when they are on a beautiful farm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, they well, didn't want a whole to other... render anybody's bodies, so yeah, that, that, that was – there is a funny – like, the not rendering any bodies. There's a part where the car drives up and Beth is apparently in the car, but you communicate with her still through the walkie-talkie. <laughs> yes. And it's like – they're right – I'm like, why would you – and it's – again, it's like a two-minute conversation – that's like all about, you know, their lives or whatever. I'm like, get out of the car. You're right there. <laughs> or do I mean, like, I under, that's like, I could forgive that kind of like thing. Because I like, know. I understand that that's like, well, you know, sure. doing a fully realized 3D human being with voice acting is a really big ask for a little mini indie I like know. this. So I get that. I do. That's not so. It, but it does like, it's noticeable when you run yeah. into things like that. Nate, you're right that the one of the things that stuck out about this about the writing is the um the sort of like uh like th- that it it isn't punchy that it is the sort of like laconic uh you know slow moving dialogue. Occasionally, it does get punchier, especially towards the end of the game, where they're yeah. where like the main character Adam is starting to kind of call Beth on her shit a little bit more. But like, what really got to me is it it's it's more just sort of like issues not so much with the style of the dialogue which was fine as far as i was concerned it was it was more about the uh, it's hard to talk about this without without getting into spoilers and so we will have a spoiler break towards the end where we're going to like talk about some of the things that are come up towards the end of the game that um i i think are just sort of poorly conceived plot ideas um but but there's just there's just a uh uh the the, the problem with this game is is more about like character motivations and uh and general plot stuff that for me just didn't a hundred percent make sense and then when the game does make an effort to explain itself in ways that again are kind of spoilery it still didn't feel like it made sense um i want to talk through a little bit of what i mean just in terms of like the beginning of the game like how this how this story begins the game begins with you. You are Adam. The we mentioned the characters' names already, but we didn't really set up the beginning of the story. Uh, actually, the the beginning, this first scene, uh, is that Claire. Excuse me, not Claire. Uh, Claire is one of her Beth. friends. Beth uh, is sitting in her car outside of a farm, and that farm has a big for sale sign on the front. And she's on the phone with somebody named Claire, who is apparently one of her longtime friends. It's pretty obvious that, like, you know, she's asking about their kids and, you know, what she's been up to. And it becomes, even though you're only hearing one side of this conversation, it becomes obvious that Beth has been calling all of her old friends from back in the day, uh, presumably her metal detectoring friends, uh, 
uh, asking them to come help her search this farm because it's her last opportunity to find something she's always wanted to find. Um, and all of her friends have said no. Uh, and uh, so she tells Claire, the last person she was talking to, uh, well, I was thinking about asking Adam. And you hear a kind of a sharp murmur from the other end of the phone. Um and she said, no, no, you just never, you folks, ne- you know, you, my, my, you friends never understood Adam. He's good for me. He helps me when I need him. Uh, you know, he's, uh, you know he's, he's good for me. You, you just never understood him. And so what is the nature of Claire? Excuse me. I keep saying Claire. What is the nature of Beth and Adam's relationship? It has this sort of slightly off part to it, even from the very beginning, because you know that all of this main character, um, Beth's longtime friends don't like Adam for some reason. And it's obvious they haven't talked in many years from the very beginning. Uh, you know, Adam is saying like, you know, well, why did you, why did you call me out of nowhere? You know, I've never, you know, we haven't talked in years. He's, he's perfectly happy to have been summoned, uh, out of nowhere, uh, after many, many long years of absence to, uh, run a metal detector over this, uh, British farm for days on end. Um, while having a conversation with Beth about her uh, husband, or rather, excuse me, fiance, uh, who hasn't been treating her right, and their their marriage to be is seemingly on the rocks, and all of the other problems in Beth's life, her um, wanting to become the boss of the uh, of the family business, uh, but having conflicts with her dad and her sister, et cetera, et cetera. Mud a lot. Yeah, it's yeah. a good name. It's a good name. They make. Uh, like outdoor equipment. And the name of their company is Mud a lot. I like it. I think that conversation put my antennas up because we have a, Reagan and I have a friend from middle school, Jennifer Uden, who's currently an editor, used to be a literary agent. And her two rules for writers straight off the bat is you either go way bigger on exposition where you are detailing everybody saying things that are obvious or everybody is talking about a thing they all know in such a way that is so vague (laughs) that it makes no sense to have those people having that conversation. And that initial conversation was definitely in category two of, but that mysterious thing that happens with Adam, we can't have that. Oh no, but Adam... He's important to me because of a relationship I can't disclose. <laughs> that conversation yeah, like off the nobody bat. Nobody talks like that. Woo. Yeah. Like, antenna were up. And I'll forgive it for an opening cutscene, but my issue moving forward wasn't, was that it was repetitive obviousness because they were intentionally vague enough times that it became very obvious what they were being vague about over and over. That's what eventually got me is they layered. Well, we'll vagueness. find out. I, I think like my, my it. read on it at the time, and I, I, I think this was probably their intent, was that my, my read on the Adam and Beth relationship was at first I thought he was an old boyfriend. Uh, sure. And I thought that she had summoned him because he, you know, he was the kind of doormat guy that she knew would come when she called, or maybe he, you know, she knew he was like still had a, a, a torch burning for her. And so, even though she was on the on the eve of marriage, uh, she was asking him to come, uh, like dig around in the mud for days for her. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, sure, fine, you know that 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 might be an interesting relationship to explore. I was kind of waiting for that to boil over because that seems like the kind of thing that would. And my issue was that was so obviously pointed to by that vague dialogue that I was convinced that was not the answer. Mm, see, <laughs> I thought and, that was definitely it for the beginning. And I yeah. thought there was no way that was the answer because the dialogue would have been more specific if that was the answer. Yeah, that's so, not a mystery. That's the first thing you think of. So I had my antenna up and I was and then I was a little bit nervous about where the writing was going to go because. Yeah, well, this game does do uh, what I think a lot of these narrative fiction or narrative uh, like exploration games try to do is they set up little misdirects and they set up little like micro mysteries where you're going to be like, oh, maybe this is a thing. And then it's like. Oh, no, it's not like in Gone Home. I just, even when I played it for a second time, I kept being like, there's gonna be ghosts. I'm certain. (laughs) Like, 
there's going to be ghosts, you know, and then there's no ghosts. And it's like, well, yeah, of course. Spoilers no for ghosts. Gone Home. <laughs> there, well, I don't know. I said I played it twice and still felt like there might. I still think there might be ghosts, I guess you is what I'm getting at. You just didn't find that hidden. You didn't I get the DLC. Found, I yeah, I haven't found those ghosts yet. But, it, but this game does that, too. There's a lot of these little things that make you think like, oh, this is there's more than meets the eye here. And and there's many of these little subtle Mr. X or, or, or direct. There's a lot uh, of things about the, about the central relationship that like seemingly don't add up. And, um, the game does eventually sort of show its cards on this. And again, that's something we're going to talk about post spoiler break, but I can, I think say pre spoiler break that I found its reveal here to be pretty unsatisfying. The, the other big problem I had with it was how it sort of carries its theme. Like, I, 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 it's probably debatable, like, exactly. Like, you know, nothing has just is reducible to just a single, uh, totally isolated theme. But, like, the, the big, I think, um, message that I, well, I, I think that, that, uh, that Adam has for Beth, at least, is about, like, trying to relax and uh, not try to be uh, like constantly in total control of everything in your life, you know, let go and you'll have a better time in your life kind of vibe. Oh, that's so yeah. funny because I read the main, I, I guess an interpretation is enjoy your privilege because to me, the main point of it was she kept saying, I worked so hard for X. Yes. Okay. I worked so hard for Y. And then he says, Oh no, but you started on, you know, your daddy helped you. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, all, yes. Also that, like, I don't mean to, uh, I don't mean to gloss over that. That is another huge aspect to this, uh, to this like <laughs> central thing is like uh. Beth is very obviously like she, she's not, I, she's definitely benefited from um, privilege and, and most especially I think, I, I don't know actually how wealthy they are, but like wealth in the sense that like she is employed by a family business and has been all of her life. Um, and she's coming to terms with a big, a big part of what she's coming to terms with in this story is like feeling that she worked super hard for everything she's gotten and, and, and it hasn't gotten her due. Um, and Adam is sort of pointing out the ways in which she didn't work so hard for, or lucked into, or otherwise had things given to her, uh, that she thought she worked super hard for, but actually not that, um, my favorite example of this is just an aside. She mentions that she, her dad knew ahead of time she was winning some award. And Adam asked why he knew ahead of time. And they said, oh, he was the magazine's number one advertiser. Turns yeah. out my sister won the award the next year. I know. And she there's... was so – and I had to be happy for her. It's like, hi, your dad gives so much money to this magazine. And then your daughters win the Rising Star Award two years in a row. Wow. What Can are the chances? Not, <laughs> well, that's what I said at the beginning. That's what I mean this by the like, obviousness. Like, yeah, it's yeah. there. Yeah. It really that, – yeah. that is a that is a theme that it's like – it's really right up front and center. Uh, and it's about like – Beth is like – at this point in her life where she's a uh, uh feels like she's losing what she's worked for. So like her relationship with her sister is falling apart because they are sort of in competition for who's going to take over the family business. Um she's also you know, likewise have, having a bad relationship with her father because you know he seems to be leaning leaning towards giving it to her sister uh where she feels like she's you know been the one that's been there putting in the hours uh and that she deserves it um whereas of course you know uh uh, uh adam will point out like there's probably people working in your warehouse that have put in more hours well, and she drives a super nice car and he's like wow you you live walking distance from the office like what do you need that for and she's like well i want to be comfortable when i drive and you're like <laughs> oh my god this is this is definitely like it's a it's a weird um you know version of privilege and nepotism where it's like all like all still on a farm and yeah, like it's out, funny it, like it, it is sort of like um it, it's it's easy to like tell a story about privilege when when like you're telling uh, a story about an incredibly wealthy person. Um, and I think that you don't really get a sense of like the actual like dollar signs on anybody here, but like the fact that you're surrounded by nature and you're out doing this like fairly humble hobby um, does kind of like uh, it, 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 
it, it, I think it, on, on one level, like this is something to applaud the game for is like, it's a game about checking your privilege and it's a game about checking your privilege in a way that isn't necessarily like the easy route, which is like, well, like super, the super rich have it good while the super right. poor have it hard. It's more just sort of about like, um, uh, uh, like the privilege of, uh, generational wealth, I guess. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, that's a, that's an interesting topic for a game and i think it does that particular thing pretty decently through these little moments like we were talking about i think where it just sort of started to be an issue for me in terms of the writing was that like eventually like they really want to make sure you get this theme and eventually they just start coming out and saying it in mm-hmm. in incredibly plain ways that felt a little um uh I don't know. How, how would you say that, Laura? I think we were talking about this earlier, but it just sort of, it, it gets a little... It's very on the nose. Yeah. It's a bit like, I don't know why this came to mind, but my first thought was, it's like in The Handmaid's Tale when they played, like, you know, a really girl power song while she walks down the hall. Like, there's some very on the nose needle drops, and one of them was saying something like... That's what dads do. <laughs> no, <laughs> the, the, that the was that, that was this game's needle drop. That was playing like Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen. It's like this is how you should feel. I think the the um, I think the the time that it that it hit me the hardest, and it wasn't so much about that particular theme, but like sort of the other the, the larger overarching theme of like you know why why is she here? Why is mm-hmm. there, was, there was one moment oh, where, they said where it's Adam not says about like. The- you're, you think you, he said something along as like you think maybe you're looking you're not actually just looking for an earring and I'm like you think yeah we all knew that from the like the earring as a metaphor we know all right uh, whenever they, they someone also, says you know the answer don't you <laughs> that's another Lord. one yeah Adam the character that you play uh, Adam just always has the most like perfect gentle but direct thing to say it was like is this guy like a therapist or something it's like constantly except uh, when he says well you're no longer slimming down <laughs> Excuse that's me, a good sir. point i take it all that's I the forgot only all about time it. he was mean. i take it all back i forgot about that one but uh <laughs> but still like it, it it doesn't like and and i you know i think we know that this is to a degree intentional but it also just never really felt like Oh, this is like two people talking, you know, it was like always exactly right. And I had the same feeling too about uh, like the pacing of finding items. And and I know we're going to talk a little bit about it after the spoiler break, but you can just tell like this isn't like there's something. You remember like the movie like uh, uh, Slumdog Millionaire, mm-hmm. which was really, really popular. And it always drove me crazy because it was like. Oh, this like exact series of events set them exactly upright for exactly that game game show series of questions, and it's like that just felt so unrealistic to me. And this is the series of items that they find. It's like exactly the item that would spark exactly this conversation, and then the next item sparks exactly the next right step in the conversation, and everything just feels like too organized and. It's a little contrived. And it's funny because I have one critique I have is that it needs to be tighter. But I also think it needs to have a few items that are showing secondary characteristics of Beth or secondary characteristics of Adam. I I do like an unassociated character tidbit that's not directly tied to the theme. And I think there should have been fewer items. It really hits on these themes, man. It's all it is. Everything relates to one of the themes. And I, you know you take a picture of a hot air balloon and it's about having the money and the, the fiance going on, you know, would your fiance do this? Do you have the money to do this? How did you get the money to do this? And it's just hitting on the two themes versus looking at a hot air balloon and making a joke about, you know, flying away or Kansas or something. Like, have a yeah. different joke, have a different theme once in a while. I, I want it to both be tighter and looser. I would have liked more um, memories about their their friendship when they were younger. Like this constant references to her and her friends. You know, you you learn the names of many of them, and uh, they you get this whole backstory about them all metal detecting together, and they were called the Truffle Pigs, 
and they named their their metal detectors the truffle pigs as well and like that's that's cute details but like i apart from knowing like okay one of the old friends has become a mom and one of the old friends is uh like a high powered business executive who travels the world and the other friend is like a um you know fun loving person who goes to concerts and you don't learn much else about them or anything about their relationship with each other as kids and you certainly don't learn anything about what her relationship is to adam for reasons that we'll get into you you want to hear stories about how you know one was the leader and always causing him to do dares the other one caught snakes and the person who likes going to music festival always broke out her guitar like that's the stuff i wanted to hear more about yeah like just to just to give us more for the characters to hang their their stories on i I was Absolutely astounded that you never found an item dropped by one of the other metal detectorists. Right. Okay. There's a lot of missed opportunities here, like in, in terms of the items. Like you Something never from find her mother. Yeah, you never find an item that was like that keys into a story from her individual past. Even though we know she spent a lot of time on this farm when she was younger. Um, there's a, uh, I think, partly a red herring side story thing where you talk about the uh, the the standing slayer, a uh, um, which I think, you know, th- this I feel like is also kind of lifted from the Firewatch playbook where there's like, a, you know, like a, a really uh, salacious story that uh, gets kind of unwound into not being quite so salacious uh, by the end of the story. Have I ever told you why my husband, Justin, hates Rear Window? It's because he he thinks it should all be in his head. <laughs> He's hmm. very mad. It's an actual murder. Ah, well, I think actually that's a uh, that would have been an interesting movie too. But I mean, uh, who are we to argue with Hitchcock? Hitchcock. The thing with the thing with this game, whereas I thought Firewatch handled it so expertly and with such nuance, this game, I'm like, I wanted that so bad to be real. I really, I was like, (laughs) turn the corner and there's just a dead body. (laughs) Well, Henry or whatever his name is from Firewatch is such a well-rounded character. Like he is, you, you know, so much about him. You get that really like moving story at the beginning where you like learn about his, you know, losing his wife and why he's moved to the wilderness. You hear the beginnings of his relationship with Delilah over the radio. Like you learn so much about the, the, the characters in Firewatch, it's hard to, you know, these, it's, 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 these, these games really draw comparison, which is why, you know, but yeah. like you learn so much about those characters uh, and all you really learn, you don't learn anything about Adam um, mm-hmm. at all. He is just snark. There is, and you know, he's your main character. There's, he's got nothing going on except having the right snark to say to, to Beth. Um, which, you know, again, reasons we'll talk about uh, post spoiler break, but it doesn't make for good, good writing, in my opinion. Right. And then yeah. uh, and then Beth, like you certainly learn a lot about her character, but it is all just through um, Adam snarking at her. Like, um, you know, she says a thing about herself and Adam snarks at her and it gets this kind of like. I don't know. It just it doesn't it didn't have the warmth of Firewatch in it at all to me. And well, I think it all tied. So like Firewatch had a lot of themes going at the same time. But, you know, one of them being that, like, you know, we tell ourselves stories about how things happen. But at the end of the day, it's most often like the most likely thing. It's the most normal human thing is the most likely outcome. Uh, you know, and, and Firewatch really plays with you and you're like, oh, maybe there's aliens, maybe there's all these different things, you know, da, da, da. But it's like, no, it, this is super grounded. It's super real. There's enough in this game that feels so unreal and so like fake that you're like, I actually need something strange to happen. Something <laughs> like mm-hmm. I need something new to enter into this to actually make me start to care about it. So once they start entering in like, oh, there's the strangler. I'm like, yes, like turn this into like a crazy murder mystery where these sort of like, you know, the, the, find, find a body like, or something. Yeah. Like- yeah. You know, and let these characters, uh, like figure it out and, you know, this super privileged person figure out like a murder mystery, like that would be really cool. And I was really glad with how Firewatch handled like the, the Mr. X. And I ultimately was like, I wish they wouldn't have been inspired by Firewatch here and instead just leaned into the insanity and let something 
new and something strange happen. Uh, there are a number of things about the writing here that I think we have some issues with. Um, but I think for me, the thing that kind of spoiled this thing was the ending. And I think there's some interesting stuff to talk about there, but also obviously it's spoiler territory. So I think we need to do our wrap up and then we can talk about the ending spoiler, uh, spoiler zone. Um, so before we do that, uh, thank you listener for joining us on this episode of the short game. Uh, I promise we're not this, uh, down on most games. We try to lift things up and celebrate them where we can. And, uh, we do cover a lot of this, (laughs) this, but uh, we said we were going to do this game and we all played it. So here we are. (laughs) (laughs) This isn't the first. It was this or a rerun, folks. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so, I, honestly, you know, I'm kind of glad I played this. It is sort of interesting yeah. to see like something that nominally should be right up my alley and is yeah. is playing super close in the space of things that I've really, really loved and misses it for reasons that aren't really easily explicable. It's it's writing yeah. stuff. This is this got a, has a, well, an interesting and structure. Mechanics. Okay, a few mechanics things too. Although I think I could have forgiven but those if the writing was good. If we yeah. if we were really excited about the writing and it was tight, we would probably not worry that we weren't moving. Right. Yeah. That I totally agree. Totally yeah. agree. So yeah, this is this is just a real good case for like if if this uh, team had had this idea and brought in a better writer, uh, I think this would have been a good game. Uh, as is, I don't think I recommend this game. Um, but great uh, voice cast though yeah very yeah, good voice cast I, and beautiful I, we didn't really talk so much about the graphics they just did such an amazing job of doing this like incredibly lovingly realized like english country landscape just gorgeous yeah. hills and bright sunshine and they had like fully realized like butterfly flight different simulation on different days. where it would flit yeah. around and land on different things as you watched and like you know it was just incredibly gorgeous and lots of nice little details in, in the physical landscape. And so spend that money on two more script passes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, that's what I was going to, I'm, I'm torn on whether I straight up don't recommend it or not, because like I, I, this game left at like, I think like a six out of 10, a five out of 10. Like there's some, there's some, I don't normally do numbers, but like it, it's not bad per se. It's just like, I, I finished it and I was like, meh, you know, but I'm kind of glad that I played it at the same time. Like there's like, it's an interesting exercise. And if you, if you listen to the show and you're this far into the episode and you, and you think like, Oh, I, I want to try it out. Like, I think it's worth maybe jumping in, looking around, listening to like the good voice acting and looking at the beautiful game and just be prepared to like be generally underwhelmed. Yeah. With the and, whole and, you know, and if not, um, we provide this service to you, dear listener. We played we this, did this game for you and we've you. saved you $12. And <laughs> there you go. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, is it's available on PC for Steam and I believe later on the Epic Game Store and it's coming to Switch and probably will come to other platforms as well. Um, and uh, it is, uh, I already mentioned $12, it took about two, maybe three hours, depending on how fast you are with the walking in the metal detecting. Um yeah. You can uh, you can find our show on the internet at www.theshortgame.net, where you'll find all of our links, including our contact form, our link to our Patreon, where you can support our show and get immediate access to our Discord, where we talk about the show, we plan episodes, we chit-chat about the things that we're playing. Um, right now, we're talking about Chicory, which we're playing for next week, which I can say is really charming and i will have many much 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 more positive things to say about chicory than i had about the magnificent truffle pigs so uh catch us next week there Uh, you can also find us on twitter at underscore short game and you can find me on twitter at reagan k that's r-a-y-g-a-n-k laura where can people find you you can find me on twitter at laura j nash and nate where can people find you on twitter at nate stl And here it is, ladies and gentlemen, your spoiler break. All right. So every once in a while, we all play a game. And I don't know if it's just that I'm stupid or (laughs) or that I just the only one (laughs) or that I just don't pay attention to the degree that you guys do. You know, and and that's okay. I understand my place in the world. But um, 
I, I, I don't, I, we have, we have talked in this, in the discord and then, you know, before we started recording about like the big reveal and I got to be, com- you know, totally honest that the last cut scene of this game, I basically zoned out on because I, I, I just, it was, you know, so not interesting. And so I completely missed Apparently, there's a possibility that Adam is an imaginary friend. I believe that it's not even, it's not as if she says, goodbye, Adam, comma, my imaginary yeah. friend, and you missed a piece of dialogue. And then just like, um, you float off into into the sky or something. Starting on day four or five, she starts more explicitly saying things that state that Adam is in her head or not real and she gets more explicit she never says you're not real but she says things like uh does everyone have an adam and then adam says no but they don't you know they many of them don't name their adam and then she says you know it seems like a field was a weird way to have this conversation with you most people just talk to at their adam in the shower and like a weird conversation, but like, I, and that's, it's so funny as I remember that. And I was thinking like, well, phones are waterproof. Well, people now. talk to their ex-boyfriends <laughs> yeah. in the shower. I know I've it's talked a, to, uh, to, to yeah. many here's, people it's in a, the shower. <laughs> here's I, the I, thing. It was so, it, it, I wrote on day one, he's like, is Adam real? And then I wrote, <laughs> you guys can see my notes. And then I said something like, that's crazy because She's literally texting him and talking to him on a walkie-talkie. So that's what I'm wondering. So What's why happening on if earth he's... <laughs> would they make this interface if Adam wasn't physically there? If he's not there? real, what is happening then? Yeah, and going exactly. back to the very first scene, like, okay, if if this ad if Adam is her imaginary friend or perhaps like a uh, you know, a voice in her head, I I had a couple of main questions. One was like, okay, if that's a thing that she does, she has this this character, Adam, that she carries around with her, um, who, as she explicitly says several times, is like she basically summons when she's having a hard time or needs to hear something t- difficult from herself. Um, like, but but like that's a character that like all of her friends know exists and know his name and her family know about him and know his name. And, and she says she can't go to a bar with him because the neighbors will talk. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, bit, to her fiance about it, because, which I guess like, could also I, be she's crazy. Look, but yeah, my, my, my thing that really came down with me is like, is this something we're supposed to assume is like pathologized? Like, does she have um, like multiple personality disorder or schizophrenia or something else where she is hearing a voice in her head? Or are we just supposed to take this as like a quirky thing that this character does in order to deal with the stresses of life? Um, first of all, it never really like tells us which it, how we're supposed to feel about that. Um, you know, Adam comes into her life, helps her solve all of her problems, and then magically disappears back to his home planet or whatever, right? Um, and, and it's never like addressed that like it's pretty fucking weird that you have this imaginary person, right? It's it's that weird. You- does she carry two cell phones so she can text herself pictures and then make jokes back and forth on a phone? Yeah. Or is none of it happening? Because it's all physical, you know, it, it all is like these are things that are being dug up and they're like discussing these and the ground is being, you know, impacted. Is literally none of that happening? So what are you doing as – the, like as the player character, is it just like it's literally nothing? You're and, not, you know, I you don't are... want like a Fight Club style montage where like we, you know, we see that she's been, you know, uh, yeah. d- digging stuff up <laughs> on her own or whatever. Like I don't, I don't care. I just, it just, it, it didn't, it didn't dig, it didn't get its hooks into me enough for me to actually care when I found but out she's that Adam was literally me. in her van making phone calls and it's like, Adam, go knock yourself out digging. And then Adam digs up a bunch of stuff and then comes back to the van with stuff. And she's like, cool, I'm leaving. Yeah, it doesn't like, make any whoa. sense. <laughs> no, it makes yeah. no sense. Yeah, I, I, 
Uh, yeah, it doesn't and, uh, make any sense. And even if it made sense, it wouldn't be good. It would be bad yeah, anyway. That's, like that's what I don't actually care. That's why I wasn't even. I could barely pay attention in the last fifteen minute cutscene because I was like, "Boy, this is all wrapping up too perfect." From it, like, like yeah, uh, she's Beth's she's like, she's, she's learned like, the oh. life lesson that like she needs to like uh like check her privilege and also like let go of the things that she's been trying to control in her life and so she decides she's gonna like sell her fancy car let her sister take over the business go on a long trip and visit with all of her friends and try and figure her life out and i'm like okay but being able to like drop out and go figure your life out on a long fucking vacation sounds pretty privileged to me too yeah um but you know whatever and I don't know. It just sort of like landed with like a bunch of like, okay, none of the themes really felt like they, I don't know. It it just didn't do anything for me on almost any level. Like it, uh, the reveal didn't surprise me, but it also didn't like, didn't feel like something like really like tied up loose ends. Well, it just was sort of a messy. Yeah. If you're going to have a twist that makes you reevaluate the game, like, this is unfair, but I want a her story twist, right? That's what I like. Sh- like when I kept saying I want this game get this game to get weird. Like, okay, cool, get He's weird. Real. Let's do it. Let's let's do it. Someone there all- murdered the farmer. Yeah, there's like- also like or she murdered the farmer, and it w- or Adam murdered the farmer, and you know, like make the whole thing weird. If it's gonna turn out that this whole thing is not real the whole thing is in her head then like we just need to be brought into that in a more like, clear and Lucy's dramatic not way real. Like, I, I, yeah, I, I agree you with know. you on all of that I also don't think that would have been a good game either like I think that that would have been maybe more interesting but like I think the, the best version of this that it could have been uh, and it, we're all backseat qu- uh, like uh, right, right. Mon- Monday morning quarterbacking or whatever you call that. I'm not a sports guy. I don't remember the metaphors. Don't at me. Um, it's backseat Monday morning. But yeah, back, we're all <laughs> yeah. Mondaying the backseats here. And yeah, uh, but like uh, none of none of this worked uh, about this ending. It could have it could have been better if they were like I th- I think the themes they were going for are good right this this sort of like idea of like yeah. a person confronting their privilege and why it hasn't made them happy is is a really interesting theme for a game like this to explore. It needed another character, and mm-hmm. Adam wasn't a character. Adam, and you know, in, in the real, very real sense, Adam wasn't a character. He's not a person. He's just but a voice in, the in your head. Sense. In the writing sense, he wasn't a character either. He wasn't there to confront her about anything. Uh, they they got into a little bit of an argument, but like it's it's so it's all very sort of like there's not enough to him for me to care about his opinions. Um, you know, I was playing as him, but like the only character in this is Beth, and her relationship with Adam was not enough to carry over yeah. there. Like it, it, it well, I, I would have, I would have completely scrapped Adam and uh, have her out here with her fiance and tell us who that fiance is or have her yeah. out here with, with those old friends and tell us who the old friends are or just have her talk to the old friends on the phone and play as Beth yourself. Like just Adam as an entire concept for this game was, I com- I think a complete narrative failure. Um, yeah. Well, it's interesting. Like I was saying, I'm talking about it earlier. Like, Adam does confront her frequently. However, she just immediately like learns the lesson. <laughs> he's right. like, like you know, he's like, it's immediate. You know, she's like learning. She has an epiphany like every time they talk, and then it's like, yeah, she, in a matter of five days, which is over two hours, so it's really like twenty conversations. He asks exactly the right questions and exactly the right things to like push her to say like, oh, I do need to like leave my fiance, quit my job and go on a world tour. Like all of that gets yeah, accomplished. It, it, it feels in, trite. In few, it's like, yeah. it, it doesn't feel like a conversation. Um, it, it just, it just feels like, uh, like a checklist of lessons she's supposed to learn. I have a question um, for you, uh, for, for you too. Do you think that the, the uh, items that you find are actually located in the spots that you find them or those are like, 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 like mechanically, I, I think it. I think yeah. it like random. Like I, I think it knows what items you're supposed to find next. And I think if you walked in any direction, as long as you weren't you would doubling back, I think you would find yeah. find those items in like roughly that order or something like that. Because the the items are too 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 closely tied to the like progression of the story for it to be totally like 
hoping for you to run across them. I thought the same thing. And it was a little disappointing because whenever the game starts, you have like, they even give you like a map and you're like, oh, okay. And I started like, okay, I'm going to chart my path. And I started like actually trying to like do a path to cover all the ground. And then by like day two or day three, I was like, oh, this clearly does not matter. So I would just Mm -hmm. walk forward (laughs) until Mm -hmm. I find an item and then find an item turn, walk forward until I find an item. And it was like, there was no, why give me this map? Why like put these little X's on it? It it had no, it mattered nothing. At least that's my, what I thought. And it sounds like you all had the same experience. I also think it might just be that the maps are pretty small. So it's, Mm -hmm. unless you are walking in areas you already have been to, I think you're going to find yeah, well, I know there are, yeah, there are, the you know, there were stages in this where like you have access to like three fields that are kind of conjoined and I would spend the entire time in one of the three and find uh, presumably like all oh, of the yeah. story, well, the stories. That, that blows my theory. Yeah, yeah me too. Cause I, cause I started like, the I game trying to like, for sure. So I was zig, I was doing a, try to do like a, a defined, like, okay, it seems like my search radius is, is, you know, left to right about five feet. And so I do like, serpentine pattern you know trying to like cover all of all yeah, of the I ground it's like too, oh but, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure and i was like oh i've no i don't think it mattered at all because i stopped doing it and still found the items in exactly plot order you know the way they needed either that or there's like a sprawling amount of plot order items but i just don't get that vibe from this game like i feel like you're always gonna find this item and then this item and then this item and then this item especially highlighted by the uh um engagement ring when you find that yeah it's like there's no way the game was going to let me not find that so i don't think that was literally located on the map in that area it's like i was going to find that item as my next After you item find three things you will find the engagement ring yeah right. you know yeah. And, and like i i know that's kind of nitpicky but it's like if the if the mechanic or the gameplay element of this game is like finding stuff like it it kind of felt bad that even the finding stuff was not real by the end of it. You know, you that, wanted like, it to I, feel fair. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, like I'm actually doing it, you know, right. cause that was the fun part was like, I enjoy when this game, st- when the game started, I was like, I like this more than I thought I was going to like this. Like I, I was kind of riffing on metal detecting, but I kind of like looking for this stuff, you know? And then, uh, and then once I found out that like, Oh, it doesn't matter which direction I go. I'm fine. The items are going to be there. And then I don't care about the story. And then I don't care of like, by the end, I was just like, I'm finishing this for credits for the podcast, but I'm barely paying attention. Most evidenced by the fact that I didn't even think, realize that he might not be real, but still it's just like the whole thing. It was like, it was, yeah, it's kind of funny because my main nonfiction exposure to metal detecting is from watching the amazing race where there's almost always a hidden cache somewhere they have to find a metal detector and everyone is awful at it it's so hard to use a metal detector <laughs> to find something so i thought hey this is gonna be funny because you i, I thought they were gonna it was gonna be a little hard and you were gonna get better at it over days and it's like nope it's easy from day one and it's it's satisfying but it, it's too easy because you can find stuff even if you're not well, you get the being careful. The UI tells you immediately what direction to go in. You right. know, it, like the the little bars it tells you point this way, point this way, and it just takes you directly. It's to not it. a compass. So <laughs> it's a yeah, metal detector. Yeah, it, like I want it, it to be more like. You will not hear this ever again. But I want it to be more like finding those goddamn shrines <laughs> in, in Breath of the Wild. I want a metal detecting hard. game. That's what I've determined. I want a real metal detecting game uh you could just buy a metal detector no that requires me to go outside reagan i want to do it (laughs) on my computer (laughs) metal detecting but it's just in your child's playroom (laughs) (laughs) we could use that it's all plastic yeah we could use that i look out for chokeables i got a nine month old now Mm -hmm. (laughs) so i don't know is there anything else to say about this uh this like beautiful mess Uh, no no. yeah (laughs) Yeah. Do we want to take some time to do a what's making us happy? We've we've had a little bit of a downer episode. We could take a end couple on seconds. A positive and, note. End on a positive note. It occurred to me we normally would have done this before the, before after the spoiler break. Before the spoiler yeah. break. Well, that's okay. Here we are. It'll be in the chapter listings. People will notice it. Yeah, let's do it. And honestly, if I were listening to this, 
I would have listened past the spoiler break to yeah, hear about the ending. Because uh, if I was listening said, to the beginning of this episode, it. I would yeah. have heard, uh, don't play it. And I would have decided that that's fine. I'll take you at your word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We almost never say that. So yeah. um, well, normally it's like one person kind of doesn't like it. And the other one's like, this game's great. Fight, fight, you know? fight, fight. Yeah. Uh, but it's no good fight. every once in a while. Nate, so what's making you happy this week? Well, speaking of uh, depressing, you know, sad things, I watched... Um... <laughs> come on, man. Oh, no, Nate, come on. <laughs> it's no, making I'm... us happy, not making I... us depressed. But I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to spin it a little bit. So sure. uh, I know this is all over the internet, so this isn't, this isn't a new take or anything. Um, but it is something that I just watched, and I, and I really, really enjoyed it, which is Bo Burnham's newest special on Netflix. I don't know if... Uh, Either of you have had a chance to to watch it yet? I haven't yet. I keep um, hearing about it on on the internet. Um, I don't know. I, I, all I understand about it is like, hey, there's a guy standing in his living room with no shirt on, and it's on Netflix. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is that not appealing enough for you? But um, so the the premise is that basically he, um, you know, like all of us over the last year plus, we're basically you know locked in our houses, and so he decided to take that opportunity uh, almost as like a therapy to create a new comedy special. He hasn't done it for several years because he's been dealing with uh, panic attacks and a variety of different, um, uh, you know, depression and things like that. And so he thought, well, this is awful for me to be stuck inside. And so I'll try to deal with it by making a new special. And he did the whole thing himself. It's written, directed, uh, edited. I think there's some post work on it that's done by some other people, but for the most part, everything was created by him in his apartment in New York. And uh, it's incredible. I, I've always been a fan of him to begin with. So I'm kind of set up to enjoy this. Um, but, you know, like I, we, I, I remember a lot of people talking whenever we went into the, the pandemic that like, oh, this is going to like there's going to be some really crazy art that comes from like a bunch of people just being stuck at home. And while I think we've seen some of that from from artists so far, this is the first one that I was like, this is uniquely like because of the pandemic. It's mm. it's it's really, really interesting. Um, uh, it, it It does deal with some darker tones, but like. I almost like to think that it's almost more uplifting than it is depressing, even though a lot of it is about like depression and, and, mm-hmm. and, and whatnot. So I really, really recommend it. It's very, very funny and, and very, very uh, charming. And, and yeah, he is just not fully clothed a lot dancing in his apartment, <laughs> but he's got like, it's almost who, endearing who's among us in 2020. I know. I know. <laughs> and that's what I mean. It like, and he, but he also is like kind of, you know, he's a creative genius. So like the lighting that he manages to pull off in his apartment and the whole thing, if you've ever seen any of his other specials, you know, there, it's always this balance of like dark humor, self-awareness and stupid jokes. And this is, I think his best thing yet. So I, I highly, highly recommend it if you haven't watched it yet. I have a very quick one, which is sort of a recommendation of a product. Uh, so consumerist Ooh. recommendation. Um, this is actually something that I bought for my wife uh, as a gift a little while ago, and I've also been using it. Don't don't tell her. And um, I was going to recommend it because I thought it might have some relevance for some of our listeners. Uh, I got her an Instax Mini Link, which is a like photo printer like a little Aww. mini Bluetooth photo printer for your phone. Uh, Instax is a, is like kind of the successor of like uh, Kodak's uh, like, um, you know, instant camera Polaroid. type Polaroid cameras. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they have a number of like cameras you can buy that use this film. Uh, and I've never really we seen have, the, We have one. Oh, you do, yeah. I've never yeah. 100% seen the appeal of that. Um, you know, it, it seemed a little like, you know, like fun, but like I, I just going to take the photos on my phone. Right. But they have this thing called the Instax mini link, which is a, like a ninety nine dollar little box that's about the size of like, I don't know, a hamburger, um, a good hamburger. 
and it's like uh, <laughs> you you put a uh, a pack of the insects. Wow, shots fired on Smash Burgers, I think. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like a good thick hamburger. Let's put it that. It's, a, yeah, it's, a, it's yeah. like a it's like a sort of a it's like a fat a rectangle. double patty situation. Yeah, it's like a, it's like yeah. a fat rectangle. Like it's kind of like a pudgy looking <laughs> rectangle. Anyway, uh, it takes the same film as those cameras, but you link it with your phone over Bluetooth, and then you can print out photos from your phone. Which you know, there's a lot of ways to print photos, and printing photos is something that I kind kind of haven't done in a while. Like I just, you know, I don't, what am I going to do with, like, I don't order photos to be printed. I don't really put photos up. I look at most of my photos on my phone or on, on my computer or my iPad. That's sort of just how I deal with photos now. But I realized, you know, we haven't printed photos in a long time. I don't want to deal with like buying a photo printer. They're very expensive. The ink is fussy. You get bad prints, et cetera, et cetera. It's a pain in the butt. Um, uh, but this is a really, really nice trade-off. I'm going to hold one of these up for you guys to see. This is yeah. – the, the size yeah. is great, uh, which like the, the the photos are smaller than the traditional Polaroids, um, but like not by a ton. Uh, they're, they're like vertical-oriented, like not square like a Polaroid. Um, and and, uh, and, uh, and listeners, we have negotiated a special discount for you if you go to insects.com <laughs> slash lies. short game. Uh, we have no connections tell, that cannot promote we, you anything. Tell them we sent you. It would be great if they did. Uh, no, I've, just, I've had a lot of fun with it. I, I wanted to recommend it. Uh, it is, it is, uh, they have a, a, a decent app. And you pair it with your phone and you can print these photos. And it's not all that expensive. Um, you can, if you buy like the, the, the film in relatively large packs, we're talking about like, um, I don't know, it's, it's less than a dollar per print. I don't know exactly what it works out to, but it's not crazy. We have this. So we have the camera and, and um, the little prints are, are really nice. You can get, um, this was all Molly's genius idea, but basically you can get a little binder that like they can slide into. Mm-hmm. And what we do is we'll, whenever we go on a walk with Lola, we say you can take one picture oh, cute. and then she takes, so she lines it up and takes the one picture and then we put the date on it and put it into the little, what a fun idea. I uh, bet oh, little I binder. Kids would love that. That's super fun. What I've That's just terrible. been doing is like printing all my favorite little photos. And then you get these, like, it's almost like having a little like baseball cards of your, of your favorite photos off of your phone. And it's really cute and fun. And I like, you, you know, go. Wednesday uh, likes to look at them and, um, and w- I, uh, you can get frames for these. You can get like a nice frame that has like, you know, a little fit like four or eight or more of these, of uh, these little prints, uh, into it. And, uh, yeah, it's just a really fun thing. And, um, one other sort of to bring it back to the gaming related stuff, um, these have existed for a while, um, but they, uh, recently started selling in presumably larger numbers because they, uh, Instax or Fujifilm had an uh, integration with the Switch to this thing uh, to coincide with nice. the release of the Pokemon uh, Snap game, the new Pokemon Snap. So if you have one of these printers, or you can now buy them with special Nintendo branding, um, but they're they're identical, it's just you use the different app, um, th- then you can connect it with your Switch and print photos from your Switch's photo roll so like you can print little instant photos of your animal crossing island or of your photos from pokemon snap or or really anything off of your switch uh and uh it comes they have a special app for that so you get nice little options to do little like um photo frames with nintendo characters on them and stuff like that and i thought that was pretty cute too so um it's a neat little thing and uh i thought it would be like a gimmick and i mean i can't say we've used it an absolute ton yet but i've enjoyed it it's nice i would recommend it Great. Use that promo code. Yeah. <laughs> Laura, what's making you happy? So mine are incredibly on brand and made me over the moon happy. So both are musicals. One is In the Heights, the movie. Uh, guys, they've made a good movie musical again. That's all I wanted. I haven't seen it yet. There's been so good. many Man. bad ones. Make good movie <laughs> musicals again. Just make a good movie musical again and I will see it. Many times. I mean, uh, it's great. It's well directed. The the music is good. Uh, there are really inventive like, stage numbers. They didn't cast celebrities, so everyone can sing. And my favorite thing is in the opening number, uh, there is a point when Anthony Ramos, the lead, is looking out the window and uh, the dancers on the street are reflected. And in 90% of modern movie musicals, uh, when he walks out of his bodega and joins the street, all the dancing would suddenly get bad. 
<laughs> so the lead could dance in the middle and look good. So the dancing that looks really, really cool would just get really – go foom, it's like deflate like a balloon. Anthony Ramos goes in and everyone is going really hard, this super elaborate choreography. And he steps in and he – does it? It gets harder. And I was like, yeah, that guy almost stood <laughs> nice. up and cheered. It's like, nice. cast people who can perform. There's people you know in here, too, like Stephanie Beatrice from um, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Nine-Nine. Nice. She's yeah. so funny as one of yeah. the nail salon girls. Um, you know, great hair extensions, almost unrecognizable from her cop role. Um, anyway, it's a good time. You will have a blast. I can't wait. It's, it's great. And well, the other one yeah. is uh, the Peacock. TV show Girls Five Eva, which is a I've heard that's good. I haven't seen it's, it yet. It's short as heck. There's only eight episodes. Oh, I didn't realize. Like Twenty five minutes. Uh, I rewatched it with Justin in two nights, um, just this week, and it's a musical because it is uh, about a girl group from the two thousands that gets sampled by a rapper and tries to reunite as almost 40 year olds. Um, <laughs> nice. And all of the songs are catchy as hell and stupid as hell. For example, the title Love theme it. song, you're going to hear every episode and we'll laugh every time at the, uh, it's we're going to be famous five Eva because four Eva's too short. <laughs> <laughs> that is stupid. I like gotta be it. famous three gather because that's one more than two gather. Oh God. That is also stupid. And, and then at great. the end of it, they say, so what are you waiting five? Oh, <laughs> and no. every time. It's getting dumber. It's getting and dumber. every time you're going to laugh. Um, yeah. <laughs> It, it doesn't even come back around. So, like the second time, you're like, Ugh. the third time you're into it, like you will laugh every single time. Um, That's great. All, there's a song in the third or fourth episode where she just lists things she's afraid of, and it goes from normal to incredibly weird instantly. And it is like every anxiety fear. Like if there was a verse about being worried you're gonna fall down those. Uh, basements they open up on New York sidewalks or that I'm going to fall off the balcony when I'm sitting in a chair. Like, other than that, like, <laughs> like, if you added those verses, it would be more specific to me. But, guys, it's... Uh, uh, the musical is back this week, and I'm very yeah, happy. Yeah, awesome. I'm into it. Awesome. Can't wait to watch those. Uh, well, listeners, we've already done our admin and outro, so you are all set. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Short Game, and I can't wait to join you again next week when we're going to be talking about Chicory, a game that Ooh. I can already tell you I am finding incredibly charming. Uh, yes. Really, really enjoying it already. So uh, can't wait to talk about it with you next week, and uh, see you then. Mm -hmm. Bye.